everyone. Welcome to the Country Living Homestead. Today is kind of a solemn day on the homestead. I'm butchering our Cornish, or Cornish cross chickens today. And I'm going to take you through the process of processing these birds and getting them into the canning jar. However, I will not be showing the butchering process. I don't think that YouTube's algorithm would like that very much. So the bird has already been dispatched. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you how I process this bird now from this point to get it ready to go into the canning jars. Now, since I am putting the, or canning this bird, these birds, I will just be skinning them. They won't um, need their skin for the canning process. In fact, I would just remove that anyway. So instead of going through the whole process of um, taking these birds and running them through our chicken plucker, it's just gonna be quicker for me to go ahead and skin these birds. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process for that. Okay, sorry about my lighting here. I'm kind of in a dappled shade area. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna want are some sharp knives. I like to use this just to remove these wings. I'm gonna take those off on the second joint and then I'm just going to um, start to remove the skin from the bird. So what I like to do is I like to just take out some of the feathers so I can see where I'm cutting and I just make a really light cut in there so that I can get my fingers in there and start removing the skin. So it's pretty easy to take off. There will be areas where you have to uh, kind of cut it off and then you'll have some feathers to uh, kind of clean up after the process. But actually I'm gonna take my wings off now just to get those out of the way. So I like to remove those at the second joint my knife is a little bit dull, so bear with me. There is a joint right there. It's the second one closest to the bird. And if you hit that just right, it's really easy to cut that wing right off. So let's see if we can get that again on the second one. And there it is again just comes off very easily. So, set those aside. I'm gonna take the feet off. Once again, you're gonna wanna get the joint and just try to follow that the whole way around the leg and that will get that leg right off. Very easy to do if you hit the right spot. It takes a little bit of practice, but it doesn't take very long to figure out where that's at. As you can see, it's just really that first big joint. All right, now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna continue to remove the skin from the bird. I don't like to just rip at it too much because I don't want to damage the meat any more than I have to. So I like to just get in there close to the skin and cut it off. You'll see it's kind of like a, it almost looks like a clear membrane that you're cutting through. My knife could use a bit of a sharpen at this point because I'm on my seventh bird right now and I haven't sharpened it yet. most of it pulls off pretty easily but there will be areas where you're gonna want to cut it and it can get a little bit messy because the feathers want to stick to your hands when they get wet for the legs I try to just pull that skin right down just to get a smooth removal sometimes you can't and you've got to cut it off and you We'll have to clean that area up a little bit with the feathers, but it's not too bad. And again, just being very careful not to cut yourself. 
I'm just looking for that, that thin membrane. Now what I like to do up at the neck, I just grab the neck and pull the feathers right off the top of the neck. This is the windpipe. So you'll be getting that out later in the crop. Try not to break open that crop if you can help it. And I just try to pull as much of that skin off as I can. If you notice that it's threatening to tear the meat, then you can just go ahead and use your knife. Again, I just pull it backwards off the arms too, just to kind of get a clean removal. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it off the leg, but it's not too bad. And I see that we missed a little up here, so we'll just go ahead and pull that off. All right, so now we've basically skinned most of the bird. At this point, I go ahead and remove everything that's inside the bird. I'm trying to see if you can see this. I'm gonna adjust you a little bit. Okay. All right, so your knife's gonna get a little dirty during this process. It's, you can stop and wash it if you want, but it's just gonna get dirty within a few seconds, so feathers will stick to it. Right here is where you're going to open up the bird. And this, you're just gonna wanna pull this out and start with very, very small cuts. You don't wanna cut into the intestines or anything. Once you are able to get a little hole started, just put your hands in there, fingers in there carefully, and widen it. And then I like to pull it this way as well just to make it easier to open up that bird and get your hand in there. Now, when you get your hand in here, it's best to go as far back as possible. Try to loosen up everything that's in there so you can just pull it all out, hopefully in one pull. You're pulling the crop back through and the windpipe as well through the bird. And then you're just gonna pull all this out. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. I just like to cut a little V. Right here. I'm gonna turn the bird over. Normally you would have some oil glands right here that you would wanna lop off, but since we're skinning the bird, they're gonna go ahead and come off with everything else. So, there we have that. As you can see, there's still some leftover things inside here that we need to pull out. These are the lungs, so they can be really difficult to get out of there. They're slippery and they're kind of stuck down to the bottom of this. So what I like to do is use a melon baller for this. These little um, serrated edges really help grab those and loosen it up so that way I can just pull that out. Same thing on the other side. Doesn't always come out neatly like that in one piece. Sometimes it breaks apart and you got to work a little bit to get it out but it's usually not too bad. You're going to want to take anything out that you still see in the cavity. And there you go. You'll end up with a clean cavity. Now I'm going to go ahead and rinse this bird off really well with the hose and I will come right back. All right, so I've got my bird all rinsed off and cleaned up. 
as you can be, see, there's no more feathers or anything on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you back when I'm ready to start the canning process. All right, so we're done butchering chickens for the day. Now I'm going to get ready to can the meat. First, I'm going to break this chicken down. I'm gonna go ahead and take the breasts off. I'm going to take the leg and the thigh off and then separate them. So these pieces will fit a lot easier into the canning jars. And I'm actually going to be using wide mouth quart jars. Wide mouth jars I have found are the best for canning meat. They allow you a lot of space to get the meat in and out of the jar when it's done. And these jars are a lot easier to clean and get out the residue that will be left behind from meat. Um, a lot easier than the uh, small or the regular mouth jars. So I'm gonna get started. So to get the breast off, I just kind of follow this middle section here. My knife could stand to be sharpened a little bit, but and you can see how that just starts to separate. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to be canning it anyway, so you aren't really going to notice if you have perfectly got the meat off the bones or not. So there's one of the breasts. I'll set that aside and work on the rest of the meat. And there's the second breast. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this whole thigh and leg from the carcass.
And you don't need to cut through that joint at all. It'll just pop right out of there. And then you'll just cut around it. Just like that. come right off. You can actually break down your whole chicken without cutting through any of the bones. If you just cut around these joints, these pieces will come right off. Okay, these are our little parts of our chicken wings, so I won't be canning these. I will be bagging these up separate and freezing them so we can make chicken wings. Okay, so this is what's left. I will go ahead, save all of these carcasses because I'm going to make a big batch of bone broth when I am done canning all the meat, and then I will go ahead and can the bone broth as well. Now I'm going to separate the drumstick from the thigh. This will make it easier to fit in the jars. Now I'm going to cut my breast meat into cubes.
Okay, now when I package this into my jars, my drumsticks will go into jars of their own. Our thighs will go into different jars. I like to keep the dark meat separate from the white meat. And then the breast will go into its own jar. So I will bring you back and show you when I'm ready to pack the meat into the jars. All right, I've got the chicken ready to go. And now I'm going to start packing it into the jars. I'm doing what's called a raw pack. So that means I'm putting the chicken in raw. I will not be including any liquid because the chicken, as it cooks in the canner, will actually be creating its own liquid and cooking in its own juices. So no need to add any liquid. A funnel is helpful for the cubed breast meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. You want to get this packed into your jars fairly tightly because you don't really want to leave any room for air inside the jar. I just use the funnel more or less to try to keep this rim as clean as possible because that can be a little difficult to clean off. So I'm just gonna squish it down there. And I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but you want it to be the best that you can. So I'm just gonna pack this meat into the jar until I have about a quarter or I'm sorry, until I have about an inch and a quarter of head space. So that looks about right. Now I'll start the next one. going to put some of my chicken legs in the jars. So I can't really use the funnel for these because I wouldn't be able to fit them in, but and I do these with the bone in. And then I usually take a couple and I will put some with the bigger part down and some with it up at the top just so I can fit them in a little bit better. And here we go. That's all there is to that. My thighs I just put in the same way, making sure I leave one and a quarter inch of head space. And you can actually can your meat in pint jars as well. The wide mouth pint jars would work really well for this, depending on how much your family will eat at a time. bit of the 
just gonna add a little bit of the breast meat just so I can fill the jar without having too little head space. Because if I tried to add another one of the thighs, it would be too big. So just popped in a couple of cubes of the chicken breast. Now, once these are all packed, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt to each jar. The salt is optional. Okay, I'm going to add some salt to each of the jars. I use real salt for all my canning. And I probably do about half a teaspoon. I have a clean rag that I wet down with vinegar and I'm going to go around all of these rims, these jar rims, and clean them very, very well. You don't want any chicken residue or any grease or anything like that sticking to your jar rims because it could affect your seal. Now that I am super sure that I got all of my rims sparkling clean, I am going to go ahead and start putting on my brand new lids. Now chicken is a low acid food, so it does need to be pressure canned. So as soon as I get these on, I'm going to Get out my all-American canner, put about two inches of water in the bottom of it, and all right, while my canner is getting ready, I'm going to go ahead and put my bands on just fingertip tight. don't want them to be, don't crank them down, you just want them fingertip tight. The length of time that you will need to pressure can your chicken and also the amount of pressure that you will need to use for your chicken is going to be dependent on your area because times and pressure varies depending on your elevation. So be sure to check out your elevation find an approved recipe and follow the time and the pressure for your area.